the first episode of Flight Plan confirmed massively a couple of very important things. Above all else, Monty Austin Ford is king. Let's just go. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. That's me. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner underscore. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Uh, thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Been in sports radio since 2011 in the Valley hosting this lovely podcast since 2017, going on my eighth season. Absolutely bonkers. Um, Flight Plan Episode 1 on YouTube is out. 15 minutes, succinct, sexy, another S word that I can't even think of right now. What it did was it solidified a couple things that we thought and expected to be true and now are fact. One, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Darius Robinson want to be here. They were giddy, in fact. I'll discuss that in the third segment. Michael Bidwell is on the inside looking in, is what I call it. I'll discuss that in the second segment. There's been a shift. But first and above all else, from the first second of Flight Plan Episode 1, Monty Austin Ford is king. Sure, Michael Bidwell owns the team. Jonathan Gannon coaches the team. Monty Austin Ford looks like the twin brother of an evil genius, like a twin brother of somebody who's taking over the world for the wrong reasons, but the good version of it. He looks like a boss at the end of a video game, but a good one. And what Monty Austin Ford does, he commands a room without trying to. And that's something where you know it's natural. You know you have the power to do it within the confines of your job description and you're under control and balanced. Your equilibrium is at zero and all you have to do is black out and do your job. Just like I, I joke sometimes on the show, like somebody, you know, I'll get a comment saying, Oh, that great point about this. I'm like, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> it's like, if you're prepared, you just blurt it out. And then it just evacuates my brain immediately after. It's autopilot. You prepare, and then when the time comes, if you prepare properly, you're good to go. It's the easy part. Draft day was the easy part for Monty Austin for, and it was it was incredibly, beautifully obvious. Called Marvin Harrison Jr., it was always you. It's been you, I think is what he said. It's effortless. He's in control. He knows exactly the options that they have. He got a call right when they were on the clock and said, we're going to pick. And why I'm making such a huge deal out of this is this is so far beyond the scale of comparison to what we've seen over the last 20 plus years with management in the Arizona Cardinals that while in a vacuum, and I've discussed this a lot, like what happened last season from Monty Austin Ford down? Even if the past regime had won Super Bowls, even if Cliff Kingsbury and and, uh, and Steve Kime went on to take quote unquote better jobs, whatever it is, whatever situation you want to build, you still would look at Monty Austin Ford and Jonathan Gannon and say, wow, they did a good job last year with what they had. It makes it, so much more compoundingly great that it was bad for the last, you know, decade at GM and, you know, bad with, with Cliff. Like, it just compounds the greatness of it. And sure, all of this is still very, so far, so good. That's the phrase that I'm just coining with this because we don't know if all this is going to work out. We have no idea what's going to happen in the future. What we do know, though, is what Michael Bidwell has done since removing the last regime Hiring the new one and watching what's happened so far, so far so good. So in Monty Austin Fort, that you get the you get the insight into the war room, the draft room uh, for the fourth pick with with uh, twenty seven. Also, they talked about maybe moving up to twenty four. Uh, they knew the guy that they wanted, 
And what it shows is institutional control in a good way. Like having, having a boss have control of a situation as dire as it was to start last year. And you're starting to see the next layer of the foundation be built. And it's done with calmness. It's done with openness pertaining to what they were going to do at 4-27. and 27, Regardless of what everybody said, yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr., he's taking calls. It's a bad, terrible business decision to not take calls. It's like, yeah, I'm in a job that I love and, you know, I, I make really good money. Well, are you just not going to take offers from somewhere else? Well, we'll give you five times what it is, more power, and you, you have free creative control. If you don't take that call, you'll never know. Luckily for many who, who've been on the Marvin Harrison Jr., um, you know, fan club since, you know, the beginning of last season when he was going into his last year in college, it worked out. Plus, Marvin Harrison Jr., like, everybody's like, oh, the steal of the draft was at 38, or the steal of the draft was at 100. No, the steal of the draft was at four. The Cardinals got the steal of the draft. And Monty Austin Fort was methodical. He was diligent during the time that we don't see. So when draft day happened, he was good. He knew. Everything was fine. It wasn't like a, oh, do you take Andy Isabella here? Or, yeah, I mean, he went to UMass, so that works. Uh, DK, oh, DK Metcalf only runs in a straight line. Yeah, let's not draft him. It's, it, it was completely different. And while obviously drafting a four and a second round pick, comparing the two are, are directly, you know, correlative. But watch it. If you haven't watched it yet, I listen slash watch this podcast and then go watch and then give me your thoughts in the comments. I don't think this is an overblown entity that Monty Osborne is in, in, in lauding him for it because the Cardinals need somebody like this, especially now. They're still so fragile in the growth process after starting fresh last year. They're still so fragile. So while it was, yeah, oh, no-brainer, Marvin Harris Jr. for that's fine. We don't know what the offers were to move up. And then 27, oh, 27, now Darius Robinson was a reach. Not if he's the right guy for the system. Not if he's the right guy between his ears. Not if he's the right guy in his, like, that was the coolest part. That was the coolest part of, of, the, uh, of the first episode was the countdown to Darius Robinson. So they talked about uh, moving up, I think it was four, or uh, 27 and 104 for 24 and 170 was the offer. Uh, it wasn't taken. And then they just counted down from 21 to 27. Six picks to go. Hopefully our guy is going to be there. And they got their guy. I'll talk in the final segment about how excited both of them looked after they were drafted to be Arizona Cardinals, which some may take with a grain of salt. It's so much deeper than that, in my opinion. And I'll discuss that in the final segment. Monty Austin Ford is king. He's running the show. He's been given autonomy, it looks like. He's deserved it from day one, and he continues to prove that a stable front office is where it all begins. Michael Bidwell, the owner of the Arizona Cardinals, was the one who gave Monty Austin for autonomy, and there was a one little interaction during the first round, during the taping, you know, with, with flight plan, that was this aha moment like, oh, my God. Michael Bidwell is truly, has truly relinquished control over things that he may have, you know, been sitting holding Steve Cobb's hand with for the last decade. It was fascinating. I, I didn't even know I was going to do a segment on it, but I am now. Michael Bidwell is on the inside looking in. Yeah. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. 
Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts to your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. I mean, I'm just geeking out. I watched it twice. It's so fun to watch it when positive things are happening. <laughs> it's a far cry. Thanks for making Lockdown Cardinals your first listen. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Lockdown Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button, man. Turn notifications on. It's going to be the season before you know it. It's going to be the season before you know it. And all of these little things are going to build and grow and oh, it's going to be sweet. It's been a long couple of years. It's been a long couple of years. Michael Bidwell is on the inside looking in. What does that mean? Normally it's always on the outside looking in where that would mean he has, you know, th that would be the difference between the two is one is a slight at him. And the other is kind of a comp. It is a compliment. The outside looking in is him looking through a, glass pane when everybody else is having fun at a party. He is the one who rented out the space for the party to happen. And then he's sitting in the corner watching everybody have fun. So when you look at something that Monty Osaford is doing is because his employer is letting him. Michael Bidwell could run this organization any way he wants to. He's choosing to change. And he has since letting the last regime go. So Michael Bidwell is sitting inside the party space that he's rented, watching everybody have fun. And the little innuendo, or the, the little, um, you know, the little, I don't know, little blurb or whatever it was. The, 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 the moment I realized that, like officially, Michael Bidwell had no idea who they were taking to 27. <laughs> yeah, like he didn't know what was inside the head of Monty Austin for because he doesn't have to tell him everything. He's not in every, you know, every second of every conversation. And while it was a little wrinkle, very little, it was a passerby statement. It's like, how are you feeling? We'll find out in a couple picks. How are you feeling? We'll find out in a couple picks. Um, so what are you thinking? When he's Michael Bidwell said, What are you thinking? Not like, oh my God, what are you thinking? Are you out of your mind now? He goes, So what are you thinking? That's it. That's all you need to hear from Michael Bidwell to know how much he knows about the situation. Sure, he's the owner. He's going to have insight. He's going to have conversations. But he's letting Monty Osborne do his job. That is the dictionary definition of my phrase that I've just coined, the inside looking in. He's there, and he's still looking in from the – he's still looking in from a bit of a farm because he's letting Monty Osborne do his job. Letting Monty Osford do his job. He's letting Jonathan Gannon do his job, predicated upon Monty Osford doing his job. And he's just sitting there looking like the smartest guy in the world because that's what great bosses do. What great bosses do, they hire the right people and let them do their bleeping job. Long are the days going to be from, like, we're immediately removed from the, Michael Bidwell watches film with Cliff Kingsbury. That should never happen. Whether it needs to happen or not, let them do their job. If he trusted Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury to do their jobs, instead of just, you know, having the having his buddy be GM and making millions of dollars and hiring somebody who never should have been hired to begin with, you see the difference? So, you know, when I say Michael Bidwell is on the inside looking in, that's what I mean. And you know what? He has it's there's beauty in the fact that he doesn't know everything. And it's not that he's keeping a that, that Austin Ford's keeping a secret from. Him. It's not that. It's like you know what, Michael Bidwell, go run the organization, okay? Go make the go make the organization money, okay? Leave leave the football things to the football people. And if it were anywhere close to Michael Bidwell, you know, showing that he's a football person for one second since being becoming the owner, this would be a different conversation. He hasn't, so he's now letting Monty Austin Ford. And Jonathan Gannon do their job 
and it is absolutely beautiful thing to watch. Finally, Marvin Harrison Jr. and, and Darius Robinson, they have given off a different energy, and flight plan, flight plan showed that. What does it mean? Everything. We'll discuss it next as we roll on here, wrapping up this Friday episode of Locked on Cardinals. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Bird Gang Travel Club. Listen, okay? You know you talk about, oh, we got to take that vacation. We got to do it. And you just keep pushing it down, pushing it down the road, pushing it down the road. This is a perfect time to take advantage of what Tyler over at Bird Gang Travel Club has offered for you. If you want to see Marvin Harrison Jr. catch a touchdown in South Beach, or you want to see James Conner do a Lambo leap and <laughs> piss off some Packers fans in, in Green Bay, you could do both of those things. If you want to see Trey McBride make big big play after big play in Buffalo in week one, you could do it also because Bird Gang Travel Club provides the best and only fan travel experience for Cardinals fans for road games. We're talking anywhere from 50 to 500 fans on a given trip. This season, they're hitting Buffalo in week one. Green Bay week six, Miami week eight. The packages include top-notch hotel stays for three or four nights, lower-level game tickets, parties each night with open bar and appetizers. Talking, sound like a fun vacation yet? I'm going to continue. Unique fan tours of Lambeau Field and the Niagara Falls, souvenir trip patch, State 48 trip shirt, and more. Visit birdgang.com to see all the packages today. Payment plans are available, which is a huge, it's like a cheat code. You get to go, you sign up, and they plan everything for you. You just go to parties, you go to the game, you go and you, I mean, you do things, you know, in between those times. It's, it's incredible. Sign up by June 23rd and you receive a signed Paris Johnson Jr. mini helmet for anyone in your package as well. I mean, this seems like an absolute no brainer. Use the code locked on to receive a bonus uh, signed mystery mini helmet or football from a current Cardinals player or alumni while supplies last. Bird Gang Travel Club. Go to birdgang.com. The first episode of Flight Plan was just confirmation. It's no longer confirmation bias. It's no longer a fallacy. It is full-blown confirmation that Monty Austin Ford is king. Michael Bidwell is allowing him to do his job, and he's allowing him the flexibility to not be in his way every second of every day. Just let him do his job. That's what great owners, great business owners, great football you know, team owners – do they hire the right people and get the hell out of the way, so to speak? And we got the introspection into that very clearly. No fat on that 15 minute flight plan. It was very obvious. Monty Osafort was calling the shots. And Michael Bidwell, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Not like, what are you thinking? How dare you? What are you thinking? Like, I don't know what's going on in your brain yet. And it's a beautiful thing. And like one last thing is like the hugs that Jonathan Gannon, Monty Osford, and Michael Bidwell, you know, transit and property of congruence are all doing together. It's like Michael Bidwell looks like he's having fun. He changed the trajectory of this organization overnight. And again, so far, so good, so far, so good, so far, so good. So far, so good. Marvin Harrison Jr., was all smiles. And listen, for the, I understand. I understand that anybody drafted in the NFL is going to be happy, regardless of where they go. Like, I get all of that, okay? I, I completely understand. And there's a difference between that and Darius Robinson coming out at 27. He is large. He is a big man. And for those who don't know, I, 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 I mentioned this a lot, especially in the parlance of our time, Big Lebowski, like in the, in this NIL world that we live in, it's very fresh. It's like crypto. It's very unregulated. Like, just like, well, everybody's going to make millions of dollars and you're 19. Cool. Darius Robinson started a charity to provide backpacks to kids who couldn't afford them with some of his NIL money. Okay. So this kid's different. This young man is different. So when you see him come out and make the walk, when you hear Marvin Harrison Jr. talk to Monty Austin Ford, these guys see the vision here. And this is sure. 
first steps. Okay. We haven't seen them take the field yet in an NFL game. We haven't seen things go awry in what's set to be a very inspired 2024 season. We haven't seen the Cardinals maybe lose four in a row. It's like, oh, are you going to think the same way then? Yeah. You can't fake the emotion that they showed. And we're going to see more and more as the series goes on. But Marvin Harrison Jr.'s smile, knowing that he wanted to play with Kyler Murray, be a part of this offense, partner back up with Paris Johnson Jr., his running mate at Ohio State. And Darius Robinson with, like, he was the most, and this is this has no, you know, this has no, um, I'm sorry, I'm pausing now. Apparently, I if I pause for more than a second to collect thoughts on the fly as I'm doing this, that's not good, but I'm working on it. He was the most unsexy pick, the unsexy name of the first round, of all of them. Because people didn't, like, he wasn't the star pass rusher because there's, like, one in this draft, at least on paper, two, maybe Chubb Robinson and Dallas Turner. He's not really an interior defensive lineman anymore because he moved to the outside to play DN last year, but he can play both. But he could be the absolute catalyst for this defensive line taking a step up in 2024, and he knows it. He knows that this canvas is clean. This is full-blown tabula rasa for the defensive line. It can't get worse than last year, which is a huge, huge power position for Darius Robinson to be in. And you see the mannerisms. You see the smiles. You see the genuine excitement to not just be in the NFL, but to play for the Cardinals. And Monty Osifor talking to these guys like, I would love to hear Steve Kimes' conversations with people on draft day. It would probably... <laughs> <laughs> Probably go like this. Hey, uh, this is Steve Kahn with the Arizona Cardinals. Whoa, you're calling me this soon? I thought I was going to be a fourth rounder. There's your joke for the day. But this is calculated. He is the perfect puzzle piece Darius Robinson is for this defensive line because of his flexibility and his ability to play inside and out. And then Marvin Harrison Jr., who is the steal of the draft at four, just gushing about Arizona and wanting to be here. And we'll see more and more of it, obviously. And then, you know, obviously we've seen them at OTAs and like we're, this, the, this is the uh, time-space continuum. I don't know. It's, it's backwards. The timeline's backwards. But it's incredible to see what it was from step one. So, you know, overall, like these three things, I could have I could do five podcasts on just that 15 minutes because it's so telling. There's no fat. There's no just massive highlight reels for nine minutes and then Monty Oswald, hey, you're getting drafted. Cool, high five. Cool, let's hug it out. Cool. That's It's not everything is just displayed as it happens organically and naturally with the, with the you know, separation of power at this point. It confirms without any sort of real doubt that Monty Oswald's calling the shots. Michael Bidwell is there but he's letting his employees do their jobs. And Jonathan Gannon is a kid in the candy store with a GM who knows what the hell he's doing. Monty Austin Ford is the dictionary definition. Fine, so far so good, because we haven't seen, they haven't, won, they haven't made the playoffs yet, whatever. Like, you got to take it for what it is right now. Monty Austin Ford is the dictionary definition of stability from the front office. So when I say Monty Osifor is king, I don't say that lightly. He's earned this like that. He's got the pedigree. He's been a part of Super Bowl teams, myriad. I think four, four rings in New England. I think four. And what he's done is add, I don't know. I, I keep saying stability. Because it's such a far cry. It was a Wild West before. Now this is calculated, meticulous. And when he's on during the draft process, the work's already been done. And there's so much power in that when you're prepared and you're ready to rock for anything that happens. And we saw it in a 15-minute you know, stint during the first episode of Flight Plan. 
And those are my three biggest takeaways. And I absolutely love it. Monty Osford is king. Michael Bidwell is on the inside looking in. And Marvin Harrison Jr. and Darius Robinson are redefining excitement as pertaining to being drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. And I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals. Remember, without you, there is no me. I'll talk to you next week.